Good morning and afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining today's event. I would like to, my name is Carmen Del Campo. I'm part of the EMEA marketing team at Oracle, and I would like to introduce our two speakers for today, Jürgen Kreis and Neil Kominsky. Jürgen is Director of Product Management at Oracle, and uh, Jürgen, can you share with the audience uh, with what are you going to cover on the first part of the session? Good morning and thanks for attending. I'm Jürgen Kress, part of the product management team. So in today's presentation, Neil and myself will introduce Oracle integration. Oracle SaaS services like ERP, HTML, and CX need to be connected. Oracle integrations offer certified adapters and pre-built connectivity. Objective of today's call is to introduce an integration platform, including live demos. Neil, what are you going to show? I'm going to show the components of OIC because Oracle integration includes integration, process, file server, visual builder, and integration insight. So a comprehensive toolkit. The focus will, of course, be on integration, but we will look at the other components as well in this intro session. Thank you, Jürgen. So you can use Oracle integration to connect and to extend SaaS services and build custom applications. Today's session is part of an episode series around application integration. As you can see on this screen and you can get access through the QR code or the bit.ly, we will be covering the different applications for Oracle integration, ERP, HCM, CX, NetSuite, and so a suite. So each episode takes place every two weeks, starting today. So every Wednesday, we will be covering one day session. So I would like to invite you to, to join the, to register and, uh, and uh, for, uh, attend the following sessions that uh, will be delivered. And with further comments, uh, I'll pass the word to Jürgen. Thank you. Thank you very much. So for today's agenda, we will start with a quick overview and spend most of the time with demos. We will highlight the resources for you to start with Oracle integration and answer your questions at the end of the webcast. You can post them anytime in the Q&A. We will use the chat for announcements. <clears throat> we are excited and humbled to share that Gartner has named Oracle integration a leader and positioned highest in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for integration platform services. Thank you and congratulations to the whole community. We could not done this without your partnership and support. The report is available at bit.ly slash Gartner OIC. So what is the current IT landscape? In average, enterprises use more than 1,000 applications. 80% of the mission critical applications are still on premises. So with the introduction of SaaS services, all of these applications need to be connected. So there's a big need for Oracle integration. What are the challenges we are facing? So we consolidate and connect data to drive innovation and consistent user experience across applications. We want to free IT spending for innovation. How do we achieve those challenges? We can lift and shift the applications to the cloud. We can connect them and automate them. We can extend and innovate them with AI services or custom built applications, and we want to synchronize them. So to summarize it, integration is the facilitator for end-to-end -end process automation. Neil, how will Oracle integration address those challenges? Okay, thank you, Jürgen. So as Jürgen was saying there, you know, enterprise connectivity is getting more challenging because like we had the world of on-premise where all of our apps ran on-premise. We had different apps, of course, but they're all within the one ecosystem here. Here we're seeing the, we're seeing that many customers are adopting SaaS apps. And of course, they could be, of course, moving many of their on-premise apps to the cloud as well. And it just won't be one cloud, such as the Oracle cloud. It could be Google, it could be AWS, Azure, or a combination of those. So the whole connectivity requirements are still there. So like if I have a Salesforce in the cloud, where I manage my customers, I still need to sync them with, for example, e-business suite on premise. So the connectivity requirements are there. It's just that they've become more complex because of the fact of this 
distributed um, application landscape. So we're saying, okay, fragmented visibility. And as you know, like each of these SaaS apps does one job very, very well. But of course, those apps have to live within your ecosystem. So your HCM, your ERP, your CX apps will have to integrate with other apps as well within your environment. So, and of course, with this kind of fragmented visibility, you know, having inconsistent experiences, you know, you want a 360 degree view of your customer, but some of that data is coming from different uh, sources. This can be, you know, inconsistency is there, costly to upgrade and maintain, and that's where OIC comes in. So if we just take some of the base or typical business processes, like this is one here is kind of your know, requisition to receipt and so on. And we see, of course, that many applications are involved in this. Now, many of these integrations could be machine to machine or app to app style integrations. So automatically or on a regular basis, data goes from procurement to SCM to financials to payments, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, there could be user interaction between those as well. And that's one of the things that OYC offers. It's not just integrating these apps, it's also the inclusion of process, our Oracle um, OCI process automation, which allows us to create human-centric workflows. Because again, many of these business, horizontal business processes are automated, fully automated, but some of them still include humans. And of course, we've got many, many customers. I think we've got many, many thousands of customers on OIC today. You'll be getting these slides afterwards, but just as an example here from Western Digital and um, FedEx. And with Western Digital, of course, it was the fact that the plethora of applications, we're talking about 2000 plus. And then the fact that, you know, okay, you have to integrate many of these and you have to do that quickly and you have to be able to maintain that easily and update those integrations uh, when required. And one of the focus that they had was on our rich set of out of the box adapters, which we'll be looking at easy, uh, later. And these are the secret sauce that just make it very easy for you to integrate. So the sort of problems we help you solve. Now, of course, we have the typical kind of connect and synchronize. So you can well imagine I have my customers in CRM, but they also need to be in my ERP system. So for example, I could have Salesforce as my CRM and my ERP could be NetSuite, it could be Fusion ERP or whatever. So of course you have to keep those um, business objects in sync. Another example would be products. I sell my product or my inventory via my website, uh, my e-commerce site. This could be Shopify, whatever. But of course that data has to be synchronized with my ERP system as well. Um, extend and create. So this is kind of like the bread and butter of integration, keeping data in sync and implementing those hor um, horizontal business processes, opportunity morphing into an order in ERP, etc. Now, another area that we uh, support with OIC is extend and create. And here we're looking at the visual builder component. Now, visual builder, as you will see later in the demo, allows me to very quickly create um, rich um, web apps or native mobile apps. And it's a low code environment. And for many kind of create, retrieve, update and delete style apps, it's no code. So this makes it very easy for me to take, for example, um, some requirements for the SaaS space. For example, my HCM does 99.9% .9 of the work that I require, but that 1% or 0.1% is missing. I could implement that via Visual Builder. <clears throat> and I could actually uh, put that Visual Builder form into Oracle HCM so that for the end user's perspective, it's just a part of HCM. So this is allowing me to extend my SaaS functionality. Now, of course, what I can also do with Visual Builder is create net new apps. For example, a mashup pulling in data from ERP, HCM, um, CX or whatever, to give a 360 degree view for some uh, use case or whatever. We see here as well with our process automation, we're talking here about simplifying and optimizing, but the focus here is on human interaction with business processes. 
Now, there could be a case, for example, I want to create a customer in my ERP, but under certain circumstances, that customer has to be approved by a sales accounts manager. So that would be a typical example of process automation as part of integration. Now, our process automation tool, will, of course, allows you to create your own custom business processes, which could be you know, a custom uh, vacations approvals process or you know, whatever you can think of in that area. Now, OIC itself comes with very comprehensive monitoring and management capabilities. So, of course, the monitoring capabilities in OIC are naturally more kind of like admin style. You know, um, how many integrations have executed in the last hour? How long did it take for those integrations to execute? How many of them were errored, et cetera, et cetera. But we've also got a component here called real-time insight, which gives us out of the box business user facing dashboards on top of our integrations and processes. Now, these are for the line of business folks. So if I have an integration, for example, order processing, that's going from my front end shop, for example, Shopify to my back end ERP, for example, um, Fusion ERP. The line of business folks were very interested in things like, what are the trending products? Yeah. How, does, how long does it take to process that actual order from the customer? And this sort of information is provided to them via insight in business user facing dashboards. So at one glance, the business user says, is everything okay? Or are we having issues somewhere? And this is another discriminating factor for Oracle integration uh, compared to our uh, competitors, is this ability to give very, very easily these out of the box uh, business user facing dashboards on top of the integrations and processes. Now, of course, if required, we have also um, OCI services that we can leverage along with OIC. So when I'm talking about OCI, that's Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So just think of that as the operating system of Oracle Cloud. And within that, we have different applications or groups of applications. Oracle Integration is one of those, but there are also many other ones, such as Oracle uh, Data Integration. Now, for many of your scenarios or your you know, customer use cases, data integration might be interesting. For example, if I have to migrate eBusiness Suite to Fusion ERP. Now, this could be something that takes place over a period of time. Some modules still being run on eBusiness Suite, others running on Fusion ERP, but there will be a preceding of data that needs to be done. Now, OIC could do that preceding, but a more effective way of doing it and a quicker way of doing it would be using Oracle um, OCI data integration. So this is just another tool that you can add to the Oracle, uh, say the Oracle integration toolkit if you require. You will see also here, we have other OCI functions or other OCI services that can be very interesting from an integration perspective. For example, in respect of um, events, business events. So many people use Kafka our um, OCI um, streaming is based on Kafka. So you can actually use your own Kafka or you could use our uh, more user-friendly version of it, which is um, OCI streaming. And this might be very interesting if you are processing huge uh, volumes of data um, in your environment. For example, I have a web shop and I've got many hundreds of thousands of users every day or customers every day on that. And I need to push their uh, behavior or their, yeah, their browsing behavior to a CX app, for example, CX Unity from Oracle, then using uh, streaming makes that very, very easy uh, to do. Of course, we have other things like API management, like OIC integrations can be um, exposed as APIs. So you can call them from your mobile apps, from your third party apps. You can expose those APIs to your trading partners, et cetera, et cetera, or to the general public, depending on your use case. And if you need a level of API management and security on top of that, OCI API Gateway provides us with that. And we have out of the box integration with that service as well. So we're getting all of this functionality here plus API management if you require it, plus the support for streaming, et cetera, event-driven uh, scenarios and so on. And underneath here, we see we've got pre-built. 
Now, the quickest integration to create or to use is one that's already there. So we have two things in this area. We've got what are called recipes and we have what are called accelerators. Now, a recipe will be a best practice uh, implementation of a specific use case. For example, syncing products between uh, uh, Shopify and NetSuite. So it'd be a best practice implementation of that integration use case. The idea with a recipe is you could take it and tweak it, tweak it to suit your particular needs. There may be custom fields that you need to map, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you point it to your Shopify and you point it to your um, NetSuite and it'll run for you. Accelerators take that to the next level. Accelerators are like black box solutions because many of our OIC customers, they say, it's great to have that platform, but you know what, just give me the solution and I'm even happier. So accelerators will provide us with these out of the box, black box solutions, so to speak. But of course you do have the opportunity to go in and tweak things such as mappings, because of course you will have custom fields that we don't know about and that sort of thing. And these accelerators will be upgrade secure, which means if we give you a new version of that accelerator, what you've already created is still available there for you. So it's kind of like two levels. The, the recipes, you know, it's just like, you know, like a cooking recipe. You look at it, you can use it and you can adapt it. The accelerator, more of a black box solution in this space. So, Let's see, have a look at this here. So this is just another view of OYC. And again, we talk about the main capabilities here, the integration, we talk about file server, which we also include as an SFTP server, file server, because many integrations, as you remember saying, you know, they are dealing with um, on-premise apps and many of those on-premise apps, many of the cloud apps as well, uh, leverage file-based integration as well. Visual Builder, we'll look at that later. This is for creating new apps process automation with the human tasks and insight for the business user facing dashboards. Now, we mentioned as well the fact that OIC runs on OCI, and I apologize for all of the acronyms, but these OCI services, now there's something like 80 plus of them, and there's new ones coming online um, very, uh, very often. But many of these are interesting from an integration perspective. So if OIC doesn't have all of the functionality that you require, the chances are that if you look at the OCI services, you will find those missing pieces. So without further ado, let's go in and do demos because um, as I say, seeing is believing. So I'm just gonna go in here, switch in here. And the first thing that we're actually gonna look at is OIC itself. So let me go in here and let me get canceled that guy. So when I go into OIC, you will see this is my homepage. Now the homepage as gives us some ideas, okay, what's going on? How many messages do I have? How many visual builder apps do I have? Um, what, have what I've done recently. And here, of course, use of um, ability to select recipes and accelerators. So uh, again, if you're starting off in an integration task, you have to integrate A and B for a particular use case, then go through the recipes and you can see, oh, maybe that's already there. Maybe can I already just kind of leverage where uh, one of these recipes are the accelerators. So there's a huge amount available there. I think it's ne nearly 150 at the moment and it's been augmented every release. And from a release perspective, OYC releases every two months. So you're getting new functionality every two months with our product here. Now you will see here, when you go in here, the whole thing here is based on design where you create connections. You know, if I have to, con if I have to connect two apps, first of all, I have to create connections to those apps. And you will see here, we have a rich set of connectors. Now, what the connectors do is make it very, very easy for you to integrate with a third party app. Now, I'll just give you an example of that here. Let's go in here to um, a project. Now, projects are um, a next level uh, component within OYC. And within a project, I can have, for example, let's look at Fusion ERP demo. You can have all of your integrations related to Fusion ERP, all of your connections for that, many lookups, which are domain value maps. You can also include JavaScript libraries here. But just give you an example of how, how powerful these adapters are. So I'll just go into this guy here. And the, here I've dropped the ERP trigger. So I see all of my connections that I've created here. 
and I have one created to Fusion ERP and I've dropped it in here. And this is how these wizards work. The whole idea with the wizard is you tell me what you want to do from a business perspective. And I'll take care of the underlying plumbing of how to actually connect to Fusion ERP, whether to use a SOAP service, whether to use a REST, whether I'm doing um, bulk data load, et cetera, et cetera. I take care of that. You just tell me what to do. So now I've dropped this integration, uh, this connection as a trigger. So the trigger means, OK, I want Fusion ERP to trigger this integration. So this is like event driven scenario here. And with this event driven scenario, typical use case would be a business event has been raised in Fusion ERP and I want an integration kicked off immediately. In this case, I could do something like a purchase order, say the purchase order event. And I can say once that purchase order event fires, kick off the integration that takes the new purchase order and pushes it to downstream systems. So I'm just showing you look how simple these sort of things are. And once I've done that, you will see here, it um, comes here, updates. And you will see here, when I go in to this guy where I just actually set the business, the business tracking fields, you can see here, I've got all of the fields from that guy there. So this is the beauty of the, there's the purchase order, header ID, et cetera, et cetera. So I could put that in there as a tracker and maybe put the order number in as a tracker as well. So by doing this simple integration here, I have an event-driven application between Fusion ERP and OIC. And as I say, the next step would be then to create um, connections to other systems here and drive that further downstream. Now, if we look at using F Fusion ERP as an, um, not as a trigger, but as an invoke, you will see that different functionality is available there. Create X, for example. And you can see here, okay, what do you want to do with Fusion ERP? Do you want to do transactional stuff? You know, I want to query, you know, give me the customer's contact information. Give me the, the last 10 orders from that customer or whatever. Or do I want to create, for example, create a new supplier, et cetera, et cetera. Or, or am I doing bulk data loading or whatever? So, but like for, with something like that here, I say, okay, yeah. And then I have the opportunity, do I want to do this with uh, using business objects or do I want to use REST resources? And then I can go in here and I can see all of the REST APIs that are available to me there. See? Now, here, of course, with this wizard, it's functionally focused. We're not worried about how this is actually going to be implemented at runtime. We just focus on what needs to be done. So that's just a quick introduction to integrations there. And I just discard those guys there. And let's go and have a look at another guy here. Here's one I created just this morning about creating a customer in NetSuite. Now this is a transactional integration, so it's a trigger. So I have an API, so I could give this API to my third parties and they could call it from portals or whatever, or to my internal folks who are developing a mobile app for customer management and so on. But we just go in and just see how this works from a runtime and management perspective. So you can see here, here's the default body that I've defined for this guy here. So I've got to put in a different number here, number 12, and I click run. So what it's doing here is, I've got that into this integration has a NetSuite connector. And the NetSuite connector is actually, of course, creating that custom for me in NetSuite. And as you can see here, it's gone through. We've got the status OK. We've got this instance ID here. We can click here. OK. Let me see here. Just go in here to, then we go into our observability part, go into instances here. And you can see here, here is it. There's my customer who just came in here. And sorry, just something this, uh, let me go in here into this guy. And we see here, okay, that's my business identifier. We see here the customer and so on. So we see all of these things here. I'm a devil for punishment. So there's something wrong that that's not rendering for me now. I just have to check on that. That's the thing about live demos, but you get the idea here. Once we've done our run here, we can go in here and we have our observability dashboards, 
and we can go through, we can look for specific integrations. Here example here is a NetSuite one here. We can look for specific uh, uh, instances of those guys here. We can look over uh, particular points of time. So like this data is kept for 32 days, for example, we see all of these things here. We can go in here and see, okay, this is a purchase order coming from, okay, so there's something wrong with this here at the moment, I have to check on that. But you can see here, you get all of this information here. Another thing here, which is very, very useful is, we can see here our visual builder component that I was uh, talking about. So when I go into the visual builder component that I'm in here at the moment, and just leading on from that example with NetSuite, I have created in business A here, in visual builder, a business object. Yeah, with the same sort of fields that, as that customer had with city, country, you know, customer name, street, postcode, et cetera, et cetera, email address. Now with visual builder, I can then go in here and create a new web application. So we call this customer app. So let's go and create. And as you can see here, this is our design time for Visual Builder. And let's create a create, retrieve, update, and delete app here for this guy. So I just go in here. So I'm on a small screen, so I just have to drag and drop, see where I am. And you can see you can add data here. So I'm going to say I'm going to add data from the customer. And I say it's going to be the customer name, the customer email address. I want the street. I want the city. I want the postcode. And I want the country. And I just do that there. And I do finish. Now we see that looks very good, but give me a create page. I want to be able to create a customer and I do this and I do the same sort of thing here. So I'm sure this will get a bit boring after a while, but here we go. And we do one here, um, street, city, postcode and country. And we've done finish here. And I always want the ability to uh, delete a customer, to delete. So I'll click that guy there and we say, you want to be able to delete a customer. Now, so, We've got this guy done here. Now I can actually just go straight in here. And you will see here, here is the app. And I can say, click here, create customer. And I put in here, uh, I, I put in Neil, and let's do it in here. And I just put in here, Ireland, I-R-E-L-N-D, Ireland. And we'll say here, save. Now that customer is being created in Visual Builder. Now, one of the other things we said, okay, so now I've got this uh, customer in there. I could very, very easily through this service connector actually invoke the integration, sorry, invoke the integrate, here it is here, invoke the integration that I just showed you that created that customer in NetSuite. So here I've got out of the back, out of the box integration with the integration components here. So this makes it very, very easy for me to say, okay, yeah, I have this app. Somebody enters a customer information there. And once they click save, we call this integration here that will actually do what we've done over here, which was create that guy in the um, actual NetSuite. So another thing to look at here is it's, you can easily create a mobile app. So the customer mobile app, the same idea. Now, I'm not very good with graphics or whatever here, but we just do the basics here. And you can see here, there's the main page. And again, I can do the exact same stuff here. Here, you can say, okay, which sort of phone do you want? We say it's the iPhone. Why not? Let's, uh, let's do Samsung 20 Plus. I think it's a bit bigger. Uh, so, it doesn't matter. so we go in here and we can just go in here and we do the exact same thing here. Now, of course, this is where you need a modicum of skills in respect of um, design and so on. Um, but you get the general idea here to the, that it looks nice. nice. I'll just do customer name and I'll actually just do country here for this guy. Next, finish. And there you see it here. And of course, I could add the create page here as well. Same sort of thing here. And I do create page is going to be customer name, email address street, city, postcode, and country. And we have that there again. And as I say, this mobile app, just think of this, you have your sales folks on the road, they're using the mobile app, and when they click save, it calls this integration, 
and that integration pushes that to article integration which then pushes it into NetSuite. NetSuite. Okay, so we've looked at the visual builder, we've looked at the integration component. The other component that we should look at then is the process component. Now the process component has two aspects to this. First is the actual design time of this. So you can see here, this is BPM, business process modeling. So, um, so you can see here, human tasks. This is the whole focus of um, OPA, our, our, our OCI process automation. And of course, we have the ability here very easily to invoke integrations. And there is my NetSuite integration again there. So in this particular use case, a customer sales rep enters customer information. If that customer is approved, then of course, this is pushed then to NetSuite. If it's not approved by the approver, it goes back to the CSR. They have to correct the customer data and it goes back up this path here. Now, this is a very, very simple uh, use case here. But with all of these building blocks or activities over here, you can, you can uh, build very complex and very effective business processes. So again, think of this guy here. If we go back to the slide, sorry, the slide here. This is the slide where we're talking about, sorry, the process automation here. We've looked at the visual builder. We've looked at the, We've looked at the application integration. We've seen some of the monitoring there as well um, already in this. So again, it's going back and back into demo land. So let's have a look at this as well. Now, one of the nice things about OPA is it supports what are known as structured business processes, which is something like this here. But it also supports what is known as um, unstructured business processes, more like case management. And what it also includes as well is a decisions engine. Now, this is a rules engine, which of course can be easily leveraged by your integrations. So you can imagine if you have an integration where an order is coming in from a front end shop and you need to push that to your ERP, but there is a very complex discounting process or rules that have to be followed before it's sent to ERP, then you could implement them via our decisions here. And I've got some um, examples here of uh, different uh, decisions that we could have. This is one for order approvals, just uh, to let you know. But we can have many, many different types of decisions. You know, is the product valid? Um, um, do we have a, um, a holiday discount for this over a holiday period? You know, over the four days of Easter, for example, there's a specific discount. Do we have this specific country discount rules, et cetera, et cetera. So you can create these rules very easily in um, the OIC process component. And as I say, they can be invoked within business processes or from the integration component as well. So this is just making it easy for you to externalize business logic and not having to code it and maintain that code. So like if we look at these, um, let's just look at one of these things here. It's very, very simple here. Um, the orders, uh, let me go into, um, which one should be this one? I'm just trying to see which one of these would be the one, nicest one to look at. Edit. Yeah, okay. This is an, an if then else, uh, if then else style rule, but we've also got other rules which would be um, based on like a Excel sheet, more like a, a matrix style rule that you can actually have in here as well. So there's plenty of what you can actually do with this thing here. And of course, you can see with looping, we can loop over order lines and apply different discounts to different lines, depending on whatever is uh, required here. So that's just giving you an example of that. Another one I just wanted to show you, of course, was the whole idea of the, the case management style applications that we do have here. And this one here is the insurance claims actually shows that to you. And again, the whole idea here is we have this business process and behind this lies enterprise systems of records, which are accessed via the integration component I introduced at the very start. But within this guy here, I've got three different sorts of um, processes and I can activate these processes and then I can actually run them. 
So let's go in and have a quick look at here. So here's one for insurance claims. So I can enter a claim number 2112, customer number, N and I do C, and the email is n at c.com, vehicle detail HMI 819, claim value is 40,000, claims and accident, I fell asleep. I fell asleep and the repair shop is Joe's and I say it's right there, uh, info at joes.ie. So now I've created this claim, so to speak. And now it goes through the whole processing of that actual claim. So let me go back to process tracking. And so now you see the first stage here, because it's an insurance claim, I have the initial investigation stage. So the initial investigation stage is in progress here. And I can go in and I can actually go in there and look at, look at that thing, check whether it's a fraud. If it's a fraud, this stage will be activated. If it's not a fraud, it'll go into the other stage there and so on. So that's just an example of what we can actually do here with this. And as I say, it's a very, very rich addition to the OIC toolkit. So now back to the slides. Here we go, yeah. So we've looked at the application integration. Now this is a, a, an older screenshot, but the main point here, it's a low code web visual designer. And I suppose the best thing is to actually show it to you. It really is something where you can create integrations in minutes. So let's go into this guy here, the one I just created for uh, create customer. I can just deactivate this guy here. I go in and you can see here, we have a very intuitive design time that we can actually, sorry, edit where we have it here. So this is the actual integration. In this case, you're saying, okay, customer details have been pushed here via REST. And then I map them to the customer structure for uh, NetSuite. And then I invoke NetSuite. And then I return the NetSuite ID of that newly created customer. And you can see here, I have access to all of the integration connections or all of the connections I have created. Now, those connections could be Oracle SaaS apps, non-Oracle SaaS apps, Oracle on-premise apps, non-Oracle on-premise apps, Oracle databases, non-Oracle databases, other technologies like FTP, file, whatever, social apps, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a huge amount of apps that we can access. And we've also got standard REST and SOAP adapters that make it very easy to actually integrate with any um, um, app out there. So once I go in here and I'm, I've, as I say, I just show you with the NetSuite adapter, how this works. Now the NetSuite adapter, very much similar to the adapter we saw for um, Fusion ERP, focus on the business. What do you wanna do? And I wanna create a customer. So you can see here, when I go in here, you will see I've got basic things like, okay, do want to search? No, I want to do a basic task and it's add, create, yeah, whatever. So I do add and then I do, I see all of the business objects here and I just select the business object that I want. So once that business object has been selected, you will see here, I get the invoke and I get this map because I have to push data to NetSuite. And you will see here, our mapper works on three levels. The first level here is very, very simple it is, there's my input fields and I map them to fields for NetSuite over here. So my target app. So here you see all of the target fields for that customer. Now, of course, you will have to have some knowledge of NetSuite or Fusion ERP or whatever app you're pushing data to, to know which fields to map. But you see the mapping is very simple. Like for this example, I can just show you here, let's say delete the mapping. And all I did here with company name was customer name goes to company name. Now, Going forward with that, I can do the step thing here. I have a rich set of functions that I can use in this mapper. For example, string functions like concat. Concatenate two values from here into one value over here. So there's a rich set of string-based uh, functions I can use there. Other functions include, you know, advanced. And these here, many of these are generated GUID if you want a unique ID for all of, uh, for this flow, for example. Um, integration cloud, allow me to use lookups, domain value maps, et cetera, et cetera. 
And what we also can do then is we can go a step further and use XSLT constructors here for flow control. You know, if field X has a value greater than 100, then map field Y in the target. Those sort of things, conditions you can actually do with this here. And of course, this mapper has its own tester, which you can actually use here. So you can click here and you can say test. And then you can say, okay, what do I want you to do is I want you to generate inputs for me. And then I can actually go and test this and say, okay, what does this look like on the target? Is this what, what I, um, I expect to get, you know? Okay, so it's an issue with that guy. But you can see here how simple these things are. So the main point is we make it very, very easy for you to access those third-party apps you need to integrate and create the mappings to those business objects in those third-party apps. So that's it there. I'm just conscious of the time, Jürgen. Jürgen, is there any q and I should be looking at now or what do you think? Yeah, we have a couple of questions, so you can go on for a few more minutes and then okay. go to And I, I just want to say, folks, like this is the first in the series. And in this series, we will be focusing, going forward, we'll be focusing on particular apps, for example, ERP, HCM, um, NetSuite, etc. And also then discussing how to actually go from, if you're an article so a sweet customer, how do you get onto this platform? Uh, going forward so we'll be going into more depth for specific apps so i apologize if there's not enough depth for many of you in this session but it's just it's just a general overview of the component set so within the slides as you can see here we have um all of our adapters that i was talking about now we've adapters that are being this uh, list has been augmented every release and as i said we have a release every two months so new adapters are appearing and new functionality is appearing in existing adapters as well. So this is really like when we look at Oracle SaaS, we are the best integrators for our, our integration platform for Oracle SaaS because we own the integration platform and we own the SaaS. And our SaaS adapters are maintained by our SaaS teams. So as soon as any interesting new functionality becomes available in the SaaS app in respect of integration, we can immediately leverage that through our um, adapters. But as you say, it's not just Oracle. It's a very, very wide set of adapters that we have here. We've also got support for uh, robotic process automation components and so on. And you can see here with databases, it's not just Oracle databases, it's other databases as well. Um, the business accelerators, we've discussed those. Process automation, we've discussed that. B2B integration, now that's very, very interesting as well for folks who need to exchange business documents. Now, standardized business documents such as Edifact X12 or Edifact UN. So these are the sort of documents that you see the Walmarts of this world will be using for um, ordering, uh, yeah, for purchase orders and things like that. And within our B2B component, it's not just being able to parse those documents and process those documents and pass the order on to a target downstream system. It's also trading partner management. So in other words, and this is mentioned here, who are my trading partners? Which documents can they send me? Which documents can I send them? And those documents, that document transfer over which protocols is that happening? Is it AS2, is it FTP, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, the whole area of acknowledgement, functional acknowledgements, that is all taken care of for you by this B2B component. So just think of this B2B component as a standardized pre-processor for X12 um, EDI documents that makes it very, very easy for you to operate with your trading partners using these standard document formats. Um, the secure file server, I mentioned this as well. Now, this is very, very interesting. The fact that OYC comes with a file server and the, the OYC file server is available for you to, you know, within your OYC instance, you go into settings and then you can see here file server and you go to the settings of the file server. So the file server here is very, very good as your kind of, you know, in and out box for batch uh, integrations. You can just you can well imagine like many of these integration scenarios are based on files 
And these files are picked up every day at 5 p.m., for example, processed and sent on to Fusion ERP or to whatever target you want. So it's very, very important that we take, um, take cognizance of this, that there are still a huge amount of file-based integrations. And many of these require FTP servers. So you may use your own FTP server with our FTP adapter, but if you don't have an FTP server or you don't want to use it for this particular set of integrations, you can leverage the integrated file server that comes with um, OIC. And so within that, you can set up your group of folders, for example, uh, incoming orders, outgoing invoices, or whatever you want, depending on your functional use cases. Visual Builder, we've looked at that as well. Now, so is Suite is something we'll be just uh, talking on a different um, thing. So just going back to this thing here as well, the application integration is at the core of our OIC product. Like that is the bread and butter is making sure data is kept in sync between different apps or implementing those horizontal business processes such as opportunity to order uh, and so on. But as you can see here, there's an awful lot of other components within OIC and within OCI that can be very interesting for you. We are doing quite a bit of work at the moment with AI services. Now, AI services could be things like intelligent document routing, document recognition, all of that sort of stuff. These are things that are flowing into our product offering as well. We also mentioned the rules. We've looked at that. We've looked at, um, we've talked about event streaming. We've talked about API management. We've also got a digital assistant. So if you want to do conversation-based integrations, you can do that with digital assistant fronting, fronting OIC. And the great thing is all of these things come from us. They come from Oracle and you can plug and play these different components to get the results that you require. And as you can see here, we are working as well on support for robotic process automation, doing quite a bit of work on healthcare. You may have heard about Oracle Senar acquisition. B2B is also very important for us, looking at intelligent document processes, yeah, getting these process insights. So it's not just looking at monitoring, but it's just it's analysis as well. So these are the sort of things that we're looking at as well. It's not just saying, okay, these are the number of integrations that are on today. These are the number that were errored. It's going much more into analysis like um, anomaly checks. For example, this batch job of processing orders ran last week for two hours. This week it took four hours. Oh, it's still completed successfully, but it may be something you want to look at there as well. So, so you showed how to build an integration with a pre-built adapter? or to build a custom integration with REST or SOAP. You showed a visual builder to build a user interface and you demoed also process functionality to build a human-based workflow. So Oracle integration is a complete platform with pre-packaged integrations. We release on a monthly base and we have a huge partner network which can help you to implement the solution. If you want to learn more about Integration 3, we run here a webcast series, and the next webcast will be on ERP integration in two weeks. Or you can join our quarterly product update webcasts where we talk about new features. The next product update webcast will be in June, and you can watch all of the webcasts with Neil and myself on demand. We also would like to invite you to attend Oracle Cloud World in Las Vegas in September. That's the Oracle flagship conference and currently the call for paper is open. So if you have implemented successful integration, we always look for success stories. If you want to try it, Oracle offers a free tier architecture, which is compute and storage. On top of that, you get a free trial for 30 days where Oracle integration can be tested. You can request the trial at oracle.com slash try it. To build a demo or proof concept, make use of the labs. We offer multiple labs now, part of the Oracle Live Lab system, which guides you through multiple use cases. And please make use of the documentation at OIC3 documentation. If you plan an integration project, we highly recommend to work with a certified system integrator. Eight of the top 10 projects have been implemented by partners like Accenture, Infosys, Tata, Vipro, 
And you can look up your local partner who is certified and ask them for success stories and references and certified experts at partnerfinder.oracle.com. And at Cloud Marketplace, you can find additional service offerings for the cloud and applications, like you can find their third-party adapters from Avantco. You want to collaborate? You have questions? Please join us at Cloud Customer Connect. There you can start your own conversations, you can submit innovations, and you can earn badges. Today's webcast is live. We are recording it, and we will make it also available, including slides at Oracle Video Hub. Please visit bit.ly slash watch integration and subscribe to our channel. All information is published in the quarterly newsletter. Please subscribe to the newsletter and read the latest edition. There you can find also the upcoming events and a lot of technical articles. So to summarize it, Oracle is a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant and at Gigacom. We provide pre-built connectivity for SaaS applications, databases, technology adapters, and you can also build custom applications and integrations with REST and SOAP. To speed up the process, we offer certified adapters and recipes, and our partners provide you services across the world. So there are a couple of resources available for you as a partner. At the Oracle integration website, you can learn more about application integration. At the documentation page, you find the labs where you can start with your free trial and test Oracle integration 30 days. We offer multiple blocks, like the team blog is available at blogs.oracle.com slash integration. Neil writes an excellent blog with many examples, and you can find at my blog, past community, many links also to partner blogs. With the newsletter, you get the latest updates. So please make sure that you subscribe. So if you have questions, you can still post them in the Q&A. I answered all of the other questions that were there. That were there. Now, for some of those questions, I've asked the folks to mail me as well, because um, I, I need some more details to give you a, a comprehensive answer. So please just, if you have my email address there, just uh, mail me with the details and I'll get back to you. Um, I so think w one of the main things is, folks, that um, I saw one there from uh, regarding SOA Suite. We will be having a uh, session on that soon. And there is, of course, the whole idea of moving your SOA Suite to SOA and OCI is where step is like a lift and shift. But there is a synergy that you can have between, you know, existing integrations running on SOA Suite, net new integrations running on OIC, because SOA Suite, or OIC does have a SOA Suite adapter which makes it very easy to invoke um, integrations running on SOA Suite. So for many customers, you know, we have some customers who have actually rewritten their integrations um, from, o uh, from SOA Suite to OIC. And an example, I remember there was about 150 integrations, some of them quite complex, and the customer got this done in about six months. But there are other customers who say, I'm leaving my SOA estate intact for the moment, but net new integration projects are starting on OIC, and those OIC projects can leverage existing SOA composites. So this is something we will be discussing in a further webcast. So I hope you enjoyed the webcast. I hope it gave you, you know, some idea about what OIC is. Um, there are, as Jürgen mentioned, there are a plethora of resources already available. You can try it out as well. So kick the tires before we have the next webcast, and then maybe there'll be even more questions for me to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. So if you have further questions, you can reach out to the whole team. Neil supports us in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Paolo Mota supports us in South America. Rafi Chaplani in North America. Rafi Pinto in Asia, Steve Tindall in Australia and New Zealand. And for partner related questions and any kind of marketing activities, you can reach out to myself. I would like to say thank you for attending today's webcast. Carmen, when will the next webinar taking place uh, and what will be the topic? Yeah, thank you, Jürgen. The next uh, webinar will take place on the 24th of uh, May. And the topic is going to be ERP. So connect and extend for SAS ERP. So please uh, join using the, the link that has already been provided in the chat. And you can see here as well on the screen. 
Thank you very much. Thanks for attending.